Monsters today. <laughs> All right, so right now I'm throwing a jerk bait. This is a Mega Bass Vision 110. So it's the regular one. I think it dives four to six feet. And I think this is called um, Mega Bass Sexy Shad or something like that. It's my favorite color anyway. Um, so it's late February. It's really warm for the time of year, it's well, about 75 probably right now at well, 12 o'clock. So I'll take this time to, to show you, a lot of people have a hard time throwing a jerk bait, but it's, it's actually really not that hard. Um, once you get the concept down, it's very, it's very simple. And to be honest with you, even if you're fishing it wrong, a lot of times they, they'll still work. So I'm going to cast it out like that. First thing I usually do, especially this time of year, because I'm trying to get closer to the bottom, this is a suspending jerk bait. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take one big swoop. And that's going to get me down probably about four feet, which is fine because as I twitch it, it'll probably go down a little bit more also. And when the water is cold like this, I find a lot of times it'll, it'll sink very slowly anyway, which is, which is a good thing for this time of year anyway. So it's sitting here on a slack line. You never want the line tight while it's just sitting there because what it does is it actually will pull it a little bit. You want it to sit slack. So when I twitch this, I'm not going, I don't want to really bend the rod. I only want it to move the bait just a slight bit because what it's going to do when it goes to the water, it's just going to pull it and turn and it's going to stop instantly, spin back around. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to do two twitches. Some people like to do three. So I'm going to twitch, twitch, and I'm going to let it sit. I hope you can see this in the camera. Here, I'll turn it a little bit. All right, so hopefully you can see this now. So I'm gonna switch twitch and I'll let it pause. The other thing is I'll never, I'll never move the bait with the handle itself. So I have a slack line. You start on a slack line and you always end on a slack line. So as you can see, I'm going to twitch, twitch, and it's ending on a slack line. That, that jerk bait's going to spin around. It's going to look the fish right in the face. So, now it's just going to sit there. And that's, that's how I catch the majority of my fish when sitting on that pause this time of the year. Because they can't help they can't help but just go eat it. Because to them, it's a dying shack. Easy meal. I'll, I'll, I'll do it one more time. So, I'm casting it out. I'm going to give it one swoop. And let it sit. I mean, people do this pausing up to a minute. I don't have patience for that. Usually I can go maybe 20 seconds at the most. So, twitch, twitch, and you just let it sit. And that's it. Always end on a slack line, always start on a slack line. Causes that bait to just go, it's, it's one swap solid hit. I'm going to give it a quick tap. Some people do this. That's not what you do. You don't, want to, you don't want to be able to feel it pulling through the water as you twitch it. So it's one quick, solid tap, tap. You literally are getting momentum up with the rod tip on a slack line, and it's, and it's hitting it and stopping. So I can go all the way back here, and I can go like this. And that's just fine. As long as it starts on a slack and ends on a slack. And the only thing I might adjust is, you know, how hard I give it a tap or how long I, I let it pause. And like I said, it's always sitting on a slack line. You watch your line because you can sometimes you can see the little tap when it come, when the fish comes up and hits it. And a lot of times you'll you'll they'll swim away with it in their mouth. You'll you'll catch the fish broadside. And if you feel a little something, don't be afraid to set the hook because all it's gonna do is pull through the water a little bit more and then it's gonna pause. But a lot of times I'll actually, when I get that momentum, I'll go like this and I'll feel the fish on there. Ah, I just 
this one right here by the boat. The other thing is I will never use this unless my visibility is probably at least, I mean, two feet at the very minimum, but usually I like to see at least three feet. I saw that fish five feet down. That's why I'm throwing this today. It really, I mean, the Mega Bass has a tungsten knocker on it, so it does a little bit, but it doesn't, um, it's, it's more of a visual bait than anything else. They're not going to come any, they're not going to come, you know, 10 feet away for this thing like they're going to do a spinner bait um, in dirty water. If they can see it, they'll come up far for it. Now, the other thing is I had a follower right there and he wasn't going for it. So I'm going to go a little bit faster, less pause, that way they have less time to think about it. This is more of a summer cadence, but... And even with the summer cadence, sometimes I'll let it sit just for a few more seconds at once. Because if they are following it, when it stops for five or six seconds like that, they'll, they'll be like, okay, that's my opportunity and they're going to hit it. Alright, so I'm not having anything at the faster cadence. So now I'm going to go back to the summer cadence. I mean, like, like, or the winter cadence. That's what I'm saying. You, you try something and you just keep going through slower, 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 faster until you figure out what it is. Because it won't, I could throw it like this all day through all the fish in the world, not catch anything. I could slow it down to three more seconds, a pause, and I could just load the boat all day. That's literally the difference. I mean, same thing you do with the spinner bait or anything else. You, you know, you, you, you try different speeds. Water's not frigid, but it's not 50 yet, it's 48. So, I mean, they're not gonna be super. There we go. See that, I slowed down my cadence. First thing I do, right there, fish, first cast. Probably the same one. I mean, these aren't monsters, but if any, if you fish the Delaware River, you know you got to catch about 30 of these before you catch anything decent half the time. And I forgot to show you in the camera, but he had that thing broad center, right in the, right in the center. This thing was sitting there in the water like this, and he just came up and swooped at it. I don't know how he thought he was going to put that in his mouth, but I mean, beats me. They still eat them though. So I talk about equipment because it actually is important. Usually I fish these on um, all fluorocarbon. This year I just started using, this is the Ardent Gliss because it's real thin and it's real smooth. This is translucent, um, it's just white. I don't know why they call it translucent. I guess it, I don't know. Um, I always like to have some fluorocarbon just because it has a little bit of give and plus, like I said, this is a visual bait. You don't want this, um, this white line up in front of there coming down to it. This is sitting still, they can see it. I think it negatively affects it. The other thing is braid floats. This fluorocarbon right here is going to hold it pretty much steady. Perfect. Um, for a rod, you don't want something super soft. So, you know, a lot of guys like a softer rod for like crankbaits and whatnot. If you notice when I'm using this, the rod doesn't really bend that much. It's got a, it's got a really fast tip to it, but it, it, it pulls right back. You don't want the rod to be bending because it takes out of your... You want to have a kind of like... When I'm twitching this, the rod's not bending a lot. It just, it allows me to get that little swoop up and pop it. If it bends too much, it's, it's, it's gonna wind up making the bait swim through the water instead of twitch through the water. I don't know, maybe I can turn the camera so you can actually see, that'd be pretty cool. 
So I don't, if you can see the jerk bait right there, when I twitch it, let me do it this way so I can see it. So it sits there, motionless. When I twitch it on a slack line, it twitches it left and right. And it stops there. And it just looks like a dying bait fish. Now, if I do this, if I do this with the long pool, like a lot of people do, it, it, it works. But what it does is it swims and stops. That does work, um, especially when the fish are more aggressive. But right now, I want this thing to look like it's pretty much dying. So that's that's pretty much all that I know to say anything about with the jerk bait fish itself. So, I mean, give it a try. It's it's worth it. These jerk baits are like twenty seven dollars. You can buy the KVD ones for like seven bucks. It, um, personally, I like these better, but they both catch fish, so it's all personal preference.